Okay, so we're just entering the, the growing dome here in the raw Utah gardens here in southern Utah. It's Hurricane Utah. It's 76 degrees today. And let's head on inside. You can see it's a growing spaces, growing dome. You can check them out at growingspaces.com. And, uh, okay. It's, uh, it's time to replant and do new stuff in here. <laughs> It was so full in here that, uh, and I think I said in the last video, I couldn't really get in inside the door. So we cut everything down. All the vining crops are cut down. And um, we're just prepping the soil beds for some, some new plantings. Uh, the green leaves are still producing for us. These are just starter packs of some random leafy greens and um, some herbs and some flowers. Uh, I'm going to mix this whole middle bed here probably just with some clover, some strawberry clover. And... New Zealand white clover and just to get some nitrogen back in and then plant um, some other stuff uh, through that. Okay, so just kind of stand back and let's see if I can just capture what's going on here in the dome. So in these beds over here is still pretty much the same crops. So let me show you what we're going to do to prepare our beds for the next um, crops. See this mango is really happy right here. She's my favorite in here. No offense to everyone else. Just kind of pan around to show you what's going on. All the leafy greens. These kales battled the cabbage worm with them too, but uh, made it. And um, they're doing really well now. There's no those neural worms left. And uh, they're leafing out, really having a good time now. And what's interesting about these kales, I've noticed that they can almost become tree like. So what I've done is I've st I'm staking them up, and we're going to just see how big they get. I've noticed on sites like John Kohler's site, growing your, grow, GrowYourGreens.com, which I fully recommend checking out. Um, he's got kale uh, plants that are like trees. They're huge. They've got huge stalks. So we're just going to let these kind of grow up and see how big they get. Uh, maybe I'll have a kale plant, just kind of a kale tree just up here, giving me little leaves off its tree. So that would be kind of cool. Um, this is the Toscano or um, Dino Kale. And let's see, it's good old Ginkgo, still having a good time. Let me cruise over here and show you some lettuces. Um, here's what we're doing to prep our beds. Or can do, get them ready for the next planting. So this is a rock dust. And I know you've heard of rock dust, and if you haven't, this is great stuff to prep your beds and put some uh, minerals back in the soil. We're using azomite. You can get it at grow, uh, growing, groworganic.com. A lot of other online retailers sell this stuff. You can get it locally. Just look around. Um, lots of other uh, rock dust available on the market, but check into rock dust. Powerful stuff. Uh, Secrets of the Soil talks about it. And it uh, just kind of explains how powerful this stuff is for uh, uh, growing organically without having to use any other inputs. And just really grows powerful plants. So that's one of the things we're doing to get the soil ready to go. Just kind of mixing that in the top couple uh, inches of the soil. And I'm going to do that for all the beds. And then replant. Get some stuff like this going. I was really happy to find some great starts, like this golden chard, heirloom chard at a local nursery. So good stuff. And you saw all my starts in the other video I'm doing with the greens up in my other beds. All heirloom. And so just kind of give us a better start on being able to grow vital, really uh, strong plants. So that's the update. Just kind of walk around the dome to show you from another angle here. I don't think I ever really show this side. Of the dome. So beautiful in here with that, you know, all the vines didn't allow the sun to come through. So it's really fun to come back in here and, and get the sun and uh, just feel the warmth in the early morning or at night when it's colder. Forget how nice the space is just for coming in and enjoying the, um, the temperatures. So, okay, here's another thing I learned this summer um, about these growing domes. You notice I don't have any fish. I had about five koi in there, and um, I lost them. And here's here's what I think happened. A um, couple things. Um, in fish keeping, I've kept fish for quite a long time, and, and you've probably heard of the uh, nitrogen cycle and denitrification. 
Well, there's no rocks or sediment in the bottom of this pond. So if you're going to have a higher fish load, you know, more than a goldfish or a couple, like I'd like to keep, I'd like to have a couple of koi, then you really, in my opinion, need to have um, some sediment or rocks or pebbles, something really, you know, round so you don't hurt this pond lining um, and smooth. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some river rocks, some ponds, some, something like that, um, really smooth pebbles at the bottom. Maybe just get some rock, rocks from the fish store and layer that on the bottom because that allows the bacteria and the microorganisms to, to, to start that nitrogen cycle of denitrification. And so that's one of the things. The other thing is they ate all the roots, you can see. So that started to be a problem. And what that causes is a pH um, flux. And so once the plants stopped, um, you know, the bacteria break down or they, you know, the, the, the plant cycle was taken out of the uh, variable the, or the equation, then boom, the pH just totally skyrocketed. And boom, they uh, probably had a gruesome death. So I feel, about, feel bad about that. But I'm also learning from it. And so what I've done is I've got a few more plants in there. I'm going to get the pebbles in the bottom and... Um, Probably next, probably about six months or so, I'll, I'll risk it and put a fish in here. But for right now, I'm just going to be happy with the plant growth. And so for all you keeping ponds inside your growing domes, that's one way to look at it. Also check out the forums at growingspaces.com. There's lots of people giving feedback on the, um, on the pond section and for aquaculture. So if you have any feedback, please post that down below. I'd love to learn from you all as well so we can um, grow great stuff inside our growing domes. So that's the update from the Growing Dome. Um, hope to see you guys next month, and we'll have a lot of growth going on here in the backyard and in the Growing Dome. I just want to show you Jane here. That's what we all should be doing, just laying in the sand and getting that sun. See you all next month.